how are you? Welcome to CUO, where we promote empowering information about Africans and Africans and correct misrepresentations of Africans and Africans and um, address issues affecting blacks around the world. In the, um, in the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement um, protests that have um, that was unleashed around the world, in the last few months, um, following the murder of George Floyd, African-American man who was killed in the United States, have been attempts by many organizations, agencies, and institutions to address racism within their organizations. And, um, and I, I think it's important to realize that anti-black racism didn't start with the Black Lives Matter. It's important that it gave it the most rev, true light on it, how damaging. But there were blacks, people of color, who started fighting to address anti-black racism before the movement of Black Lives Matter in the last few months. Now it's great that many organizations are trying to address issues of racism, anti-black racism in their organizations, but we want to make sure they do not rubber stamp it, they do not color correct it, and they do not penalize, continue to penalize blacks and people of color who've been advocating to end anti-black racism in many of these organizations before now. So in this vlog, I'm going to be sharing with you how not to be a sellout in this movement to end anti-black racism in organizations. By this, I mean that, you know, don't be used to rubber stamp and color correct an organization, especially when other blacks who fought for this space are continually being penalized and that is happening. So number one, number one, how not to be a sellout as a black person, a person of color in the workplace. Please don't be a color corrector. In the makeup world, we have color correcting, which means let's assume you have an under eye dark circle or a gray one. There are colors you can put underneath. So when you apply your foundation on top of it, it kind of neutralizes that color. I mean, the, col the, the, the color problem is still there. You know, the dark color is still, on, is still there, but you color correct it temporarily just to give an illusion of seamlessness. That happens in the workplace where you appoint a very senior black person in a p position of power visibly there. But the decision making is not from there. Majority of the employees are still white. The decision makers are still non-blacks, but a black person is the face. That's color correcting. It gives an illusion of seamlessness, of harmony, but there's no harmony. A subtext to this is make sure if you're suddenly employed into a position, check around. If it's happening in, 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 in the next few months, check out, just watch. You may just be, you know, you might just be, you, they might, you might be just be, they might be taking you to color correct, which means a black person had been fighting, fighting for change, but they don't want to deal with that black person. How dare you challenge your system? They want to continue with the status quo. So they sideline the black person and bring in another black to silence the black person who's been fighting make sure you keep your eyes open and just because you are appointed to a position does not mean racism has ended that's one way one way not to sell out as a black person don't be used to color correct make sure you do not assume that just because you are appointed into a position racism has ended ask around watch keep your eyes open as we say in nigeria shine your eye <laughs> number two please in meetings, in meetings, speak up. Yes, it's great that you are professional and you're reflective, but the moment to address racism is when it happens. In the workplace, in meetings, speak up. Number two, address racism concerns when they happen. You can do it professionally, intellectually, but do it. There's a little bit of cop-out when I talk to my fellow blacks where they say, oh, you want to be professional, you want to be strategic. No, no, no. Being strategic is sometimes used as a cop-out. When it happens, speak.
speak out and speak up professionally respectfully but address it number two speak up when it happens in meetings in environment where it happens your career is worthless if you're going to be silent and be abused and other africans and blacks are abused while you grow your career thinking maybe when i get somewhere my address things no the time to address racism is when it happens immediately Oh, very often in many organizations, and I've worked in many of them, yes, very often in many organizations, international organizations especially, humanitarian organizations, development organizations, all international, supposedly fair and humanitarian, it's usually this notion, how do we find competent Africans? <laughs> oh boy. Now, when you hear that as an African, as an ally, a white person that is an ally, no, that's racism. They're very competent, educated, intelligent Africans around the world. Challenge it. That's not true. It's a cop-out. It's a way to hold certain jobs for some folks. You know, I've worked in communications for many years and as I started as a journalist. And it's amazing how often I hear our former colonizers the Brits especially say, oh, we, how can we get very good writers from Africa? Come on. <laughs> it's a cop-out. <laughs> it's a cop-out. There are many intelligent. So when you hear that in a meeting, how can we find competent Africans who can write, maybe in communication in other areas? That's a cop-out. That's racism. And if you are an ally, white person, an ally of blacks and you're committed to ending racism stop saying those words because you know it's a lie you're just trying to protect you know discriminate that's discrimination there are many competent blacks around the world who write excellently well winning awards who speak excellently well so getting a black competent person African competent person and we know what we're talking about those of us who work in international organizations know what we're talking about number four there might be those Africans who think okay I got bills to pay I got kids to raise so I'm not going to take on this battle boldly please know this if you're going to live off if you're appointed into a position a position is created for you to color correct after another black another african have fought for that position and you occupy it comfortably you are endorsing racism you're like an african slave master you know and there's karma i'm just going to leave it at that and we know we know those people there's karma <laughs> and number five on how not to be a sellout on the anti-black racism movement I've said it before, I re-emphasize. I'm saying number five twice. <laughs> the time to speak up against racism, against anti-black racism, is when it happens. Not when other blacks have sacrificed their career, their lives, to create a space for it. That's one powerful way not to be, be a sellout. I repeat the number five. The time to fight and act and stand against anti-black racism is when it happens. Not when other blacks have sacrificed their careers and their lives to create a space for it. Thank you.